Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my Minecraft Let's Play. As always, this is Martin. We are back. The world is rebuilt. A few things differently this time around, but essentially we're all back to how it was. A couple of steps I've done is, as you can see in my inventory here, I have a diamond sword and the knockback sword. Sorry, the diamond sword and the diamond pickaxe, which I have enchanted on the table which we were going to make last time, but unfortunately didn't have time for that so I built that and enchanted with uh, 13 levels and I got that and that which is quite impressive uh, what else have we got see the wheat farm over there and the staircase this time though I finally got around to finishing this this is the roof it's now two at least one but possibly two blocks of sandstone at any point and then sand above the rest of that um, in terms of items, it's relatively the same. We've got our iron right, long chest, smooth stone there, even more smooth stone, and redstone and coal and a lamp left. In this chest here, we've got some cobblestone ready to be put into the furnaces. Empty chest for more cobblestone. Our sand, as we saw a moment ago, and our stockpile of dirt and gravel and also flint gravel I'm stockpiling because I have a little idea for a project which I might pursue later depends on how the planning goes but that is a that is it. the idea is there these chests here let's first of all this one is our main materials so we've got our diamond our 25 box of iron again some gold and a bit less lapids this time and we've got our first block of TNT as well as all the coal, mossy cobblestone and some rails and the blaze rods, the all important blaze rods. This chest here, we've got all our food and organic matter, so seeds, saplings, lily pads, plenty of food because we've got a a, a good food supply over on the right hand side down there, which I'll show in a moment. I'm just going to take some more of this cooked chicken because it's very useful. And in this chest here is the nether brick, saddles, and nether wart. So I think that's everything in terms of items. I've sort of tidied up this end here. Also made the pasturage in general larger, so we've got more space down here now. And the nether portal room, I've made two blocks wider, so it feels more, or it feels less claustrophobic rather. Uh, big change, big difference this time around, is down here, we have a different staircase. Originally, it was one staircase leading up that side, following that dirt zigzag there, and then travelling up on the right there to the top. The reason I've done it this way is, which I'll explain later, but essentially, the this big chamber here is now, I think, two, possibly three blocks wider than it was originally, so it allowed me to do, get, have more space to add this in. Um, down here is the soon to be chicken farm got some chests for egg storage got some there from when I had it running earlier I, I killed them all earlier because I wanted to minimize activity you know lag potential lag uh, for when I first start recording again because I don't want to have a crash mid mid recording and here is the cows and the pigs which I upbreed using the wheat and then kill off the older ones for food and then cook that up. Before we get started though I think we're going to sleep because it is night time. Many bad guys are out there. Okay so before we go out I think we might as well just quickly put an enchantment on our lesser tools. Um, so four Efficiency 1, not bad. I'm breaking, it's quite good. And if I place torches here, if you place torches here, you see these glyphs which travel towards the enchantment table. Well, by placing a torch on the bookcase, it blocks the travel of those glyphs. So now you won't see any travel across there, which means the only bookcase, as well as the top side of this one, the only bookcase providing levels to the jump table is that one. So I think we need to 
secure that one as well. Hmm. There we go, that's a one. Oh, that's a good one, that's nice. For a level one enchant. That's not too bad either. Okay, let's gather those up and I will show you the progress I've made on the surface. Uh, sound 25 yards, same as it was before, just double checking. Now the reason I've done it this way is because after I, when I came back here to rebuild this section, and by the way this is all this is all the same, same place hopefully, when I came back to building this I realised that when I was working off camera, what I'd do, instead of walking round that side and going down the steps, i just jump down here, because it was only three or four hearts of damage and I could take that and then I'd be in the base and I'd be safe I could regenerate it I wasn't using, wasn't really using it as a proper big bridge as I wanted to or an entrance or exit as I wanted to so I built it this way hopefully making it a bit more formal also works as a bit of a skylight because from that place down there you can see the moon setting, uh, sorry the sun setting and it's easy to tell what time it is and how, how much time of daylight you have left. Also it's quite an impressive view from up here looking into the cave. So there's a pig trap on the lily pad over there. Lucky him, he's probably going to stay there because he won't step off that lily pad unless he's forced off. Let's travel across here. What I did is I pushed back all the, the boundary of swamp trees pushed them all back, got rid of loads of wood and replanted a more controlled uh, wood wood supply over here on this little peninsula and I've got that going there again the sheep are still back, they persistent didn't want to leave when I mentioned last time that I thought the swamp so I sort of thought that the uh, what am I saying? Let's get rid of these quickly. When I said last time that I thought the snow biome was intruding into the swamp further than it should have, it was actually me just not noticing it because there were pine trees here which sort of camouflage the spread of snow into the swamp. So that 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 was always like that. And there is the flat peaked outcrop, which is our mob system also been around here planting trees because the amount of wood I took out for the bridge over the water there, the fence posts took quite a lot of wood so up we go, got a little my melon farm up here what am I saying, not melon farm, pumpkin farm been using the pumpkins, uh, converting them into jack-o'-lanterns and using them for light as you'll see right here with jack o' lanterns mounted in most of the ceiling and most most corner blocks to provide light just to make it easier. Also torches are more likely to get knocked off by water flow or myself and since they're not a solid block they do play around with spacing I think. The setup we got here is a bit more cramped than I would like to but essentially these is, this is the completed passageway of all three mob systems, they all funnel up here so down there is the skeleton mob farm up there and then down downwards is the lower of the two zombie farms and up here is the raised zombie spawner which is the first one we found when we originally entered the cave system and it's become very compacted up here this is the behind here is a water source block so it's under there the reason I've got this here is just for access and down there 23 or 22 blocks down drop and I have to damage all the mobs down to one health I'm going to need to go up here and fill in these outcrops here alcoves with uh, pumpkin lights light up that passageway so it just looks a bit nicer 
this is the room for the upper zombie spawner so this is all complete the water when it when installed the water will flow and they push them all into this corner it is a bit, this room is much more compacted than I actually like um, I could have had it heading out that way and then up and around but it would have taken it would take almost twice as long maybe three times as long for the zombies to get to the same spot by the end of it but these, this goes up here so on and so forth so that's that it's just a quick recap because I'm hoping to get this finished today this goes up to the redstone room and this is what I hope each redstone room looks like I've changed, improved it from last time I've got one repeater now powering the whole array instead of four it's much more efficient on redstone and this is going to go off one of the ways I'm going to be getting the power up is just vertical using redstone torches stacked up on each other on blocks so the redstone torch below this is off because the redstone torch below that is on so it goes off on off on off on and so on so that powers all this that's how I want that and that's the same for all the other three rooms all the other two rooms and down here we have more or less the same setup I've started lining these walls here because I want to I was trying to get an idea for where I should put um, other rooms like storage rooms, enchantment room and essentially the entrance where I want to get in from uh, I've got a, I should have brought some coal to get these going but what we can do, we can get some of these guys get that out of the way get that out of the way also place the bow there and we can get that do we have any dirt? I'll take this for now so what we're going to do is align the inside of this now with the glowstone not the glowstone, the pumpkins like that, turning sideways slightly by placing it straight on get that guy on my face so if I tilt myself like this and place it the face is actually facing that block and it's less less hideous because close on the pumpkin lights are very nice but the faces aren't only more to go, just one more almost up so that is that I think we're good now just power down through this Yeah, I think that makes it much nicer looking up there. If you if it has to come up to looking up there, you can actually see what's going on up there and what's about to come planting down, rather than just staring into a black void. Right, so what have we got? This is the controls. Oh, that's our water source. Uh, the power switch will be on this block. It will power that, and this goes all the way down. This is an example one I've done. Run up quickly this goes all the way down to redstone room number two this is the lower of the two skeleton not skeleton zombie spawners so that's off at the moment but it will be on and again that goes up to the network up there so let's follow the trail back we can go up back this way this time and then this way I'm probably going to bore a passageway out that way and get it to link up with this room just up here which is the skeleton spawner back to its original state after being encased in a chunk it goes down there there's more ladders up here to go up to the redstone and I probably have it going off through that wall and around and then link them all up at that one terminal try and get it all working at once so that is the plan 
Actually, let's quick, take a quick look inside each of the rooms, see if there's any more melon, pumpkin, if she needs doing. See, I put these in the ceiling here because if, if in case of water spilling in here, if the torches were in here, they get washed out and the redstone gets washed out, which means the power to these lines goes, which means this room would be put into complete darkness and mobs would spawn here. So at least with these, there is some level of light, even with the redstone off. So that's that. Done. So which are the other ones? I know I need to do one of them. Or at least I think I need to do one of them. Travel up here. No. Oh yes, it is this one. Okay, let's get this done now then. So just take out pump, um, pumpkins. You can only place on the block below it. You can't place them. What am I saying? For example, oops. They can only be placed like this, based down onto a block for example what I'm trying to say is if I tried to place it on upside down of that block that block or that block it won't go because there's nothing underneath it so let's do these ones but for example if there was a block there I can place it so the requirement is that there is a block underneath it while you're placing it once we've got all these done I'll head up to the control room. Alright, so that room's done. It's all lit up and all the other ones are as well. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to carry on now and get the redstone lines, or at least the passageways tunneled out so that I can get the redstone lines placed and finished and hopefully get this place up and running as soon as possible. So I'll crack on with that and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Um, finished off the redstone wiring. It's now snowing and thundering outside. It's quite nice, but essentially what we've got here uh, lever powers this block here. Oh, sorry. Lever powers this block here, which powers that redstone. Which sends the current off down there to the lower zombie spawner. It sends current up there to the raised skeleton spawner. And sends a vertical current up through a series of torches up to the upper zombie spawner. So that is now, we are now ready to f test this out, see if it works. First of all though, we need to go and clear out each of the spawners of the torches to make sure, and then seal off the rooms. And also add in the water. I forgot to bring another bucket with me, didn't I? Any spares going? No, okay, tell you what. In that case, I shall... Do a bodge. Just place that lava in there. Then use this bucket for paling while we get the redstone, while we get the spawners active. So, as far as I know, this shouldn't set off the spawner by removing all these torches, as I said last time. What's happened here? Ah, oh. in that. Okay, last one, last couple rather. It's nice and dark down there. Nice and light here. I think we're good. Let's get that in there. And that's in there, you can see it flows over the edges perfectly there and creates a flow down into that corner. So now we can get out and we can seal this room seal the room up for good now. There we go. Okay. That's that one done. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same with the others and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so that's all sealed up. So now the last task is to finally seal off the 
final drop room. There's plenty of bad weather out there. Just gotta release the water flows and then get this place fully operational. So as far as I know everything's clear up there. By releasing that block we've got this water flow. So I think dodge that. Now we're gonna need to remove this ladder which is gonna be problematic. So how am I going to go about this? Let's take this one out. And take this one out. So we can now stand on that. Because essentially we need to place blocks here and here and we can't with these ladders in the way. So we're going to have to go with a workaround. Um, let's place that piece of torch there. Dispose of that gravel. That one as well. Come on, stupid ladders. Oh my days, you're kidding me. Right. Close that up. And we've got plenty of ladders here, so we can. There's ladder on that block. Get rid of that torch. all those along there and then also on that block which then transitions to that one and up to the surface so it's a bit of a mess of ladders but I think we got everything covered might as well put one there for the sake of it ok so let's fire this thing up and let's hope it works Let's coat up this layer here. Actually, let's get a light in there as well. Okay, so. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, um, one second. Okay, right, so problem was we needed a repeater there or at least a circuit of power not going diagonal across it sorry not diagonal adjacent to it you need a power line going pointing out from it this works just as well and this should all function I hope it's all sort of held itself while I quickly swap pieces in and out so fingers crossed let's test this thing Lights gone on, so that's changed state. And I can hear pressure plates, which means something has spawned. Oh no, forgot about that. I need to be in this area still to feel to be in the range of all fours, all three spawners. That's going to be a bit of a nuisance, but I'm sure I could work with it. There we go, there's the first two drops. One casualty. Skeletons. You can hear zombies over there, so that. I'm not sure if there's a blockage over there. We've got a few, got a few deaths. Um, I suppose that's alright given the amount going to be coming through. One or two every five or six is more or less alright. That's quite right. That's quite, that's quite right. We're getting quite a few. So if you can imagine after, say, you know, AFK here. Yeah. Quite a few mobs. Yeah, that's, that's quite a lot. Okay, so let's see this so. up. Deactivate it. Let's kill these guys. Just my iron sword, so I can waste the light. Go, 
brain of XP. I'm aware that I could just punch him and it would not waste my sword. But I just want to use this thing up. Well, it's still got some use left in it. Nice. Yeah, it's it's one it's one or two punches with with the food or one hit with the sword. Oh, that's a nice power on bow. Let's keep that. Save us having to charge anything. I think that's all. Of this is just the remaining few still in the pipeline. I hope this is still active. Alright, I think that's everything. So that is great success. Finally completed that. And now let's actually let's grab this again. The next challenge is creating a nice organized entrance into this place. Down here is the spawner. I don't know, we could yes. That's a possibility. Create the entrance. See, if I go too many blocks that way, you hit the wall of the skeleton chamber. And if you go down you hit the zombie chamber. So in that direction is relatively clear. There we've got the electricals. Here is clear. This area is around here is clear. Electricals are there and the zombie spawner is up there. So I think what I'll do I'll have a play around with with spacing and try and see if I can get a good setup going. And I'm gonna head back to base now, see what else needs doing. See you there. Alright, so we're back at base and I think there's not much to do here at the moment, it's just gone dawn, um, but there's not really much we can really do here right now. Most of it's relatively cleared out from, from preparation after the crash, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some stuff, I'm going to go back to the other base, zombie, zombie spawners, and get them prepped for the, the main entrance and exit. What do we need? Um, some wood for those, we can make those nothing. We'll take a few of these to for maybe we'll decorate the walls. Um take some of those. I'm just sort of thinking of uh, different types of materials which I could use in the in the uh, mob chamber. Let's see how those look. Let's take some of that. Ah, oh, that's one thing one thing I wanted to test. Sandstone. Do we have any? Yes we do, right, so let's take that. And I think that's everything. Let's get these books crafted. Okay, right. So 32 is quite good. And the last of these, that's, and one book left over. Okay, right. Um, that needs to go there. That's everything I need. I think everything else I need is over at the base. So let's get running over there now. Okay, so here we are, back at the base. Those are almost grown. Been been harvesting them progressively as they grow. So I can use them for lighting inside here. Now though, I think what I'm gonna do is test out a few different designs and layouts. I've played around with the the layout down here. I think I've got something more or less setup I'd like. This is the pathway here which I'd like to have. There oh no no I forgot I forgot the enchantment table. 
Well, that's why we can start off by getting these in. So, like I said earlier, the bookcases need to be in a 5x5 five five square surrounding the enchantment table. Doesn't help, however, that I've got incredible lag at the moment, and I'm double placing, which means I have to break those now, and I waste the waste the wood which I put into making them. Two, three, two. Okay. Break those. Get those books back. So that's sort of what I want here. With the walls, however, what I'm going to try. I'm going to try this sort of. The mossy cobblestone. See how that looks on the walls. Yeah, I think that works quite well. Let's get the rest of this done. sure what I'm going to do with the ceiling. Um, open for suggestions on that. At the moment I might just fill it with uh, crafting tables so it looks like wood but it's actually crafting tables then that means I don't need to have a specific station for those later on. Whoops. That block needs to come out and so does that one. So because there's redstone running across the top of those, so that's gonna have to be done later on. Because they're currently in the way. We've got plenty of moss cobblestone there, so this shouldn't be a problem with running out. This is where the this here is where the ladder's gonna go up to the surface. So I'm just going to cut, cut out that up to the surface and see where it lands me. It's a bit more of a description on this place. So the mob system is over here and that's the, the 9x9 so sorry, the 3x3 three three square which I need to be standing in then over behind me is that's the exit, the entrance and exit here is the enchantment station and this here is going to be the where, the, where I make the potions and storage for the excess materials um, just trying to think. I'm not sure if I will line the walls with a different material. In which case, I think we can take out these and use the wall of yeah, that wall there as the inner wall of this room. I will, however, need to replace this wall here because that's part of the mob system. In this sort of situation it's a bit annoying because the place starts getting quite cramped very quickly. So I'm trying to be careful not to overcrowd the area. Okay, so we've got some sense of organisation to this place now. This room I think well I'm gonna take out all of these, actually what we can do now. So while we're here we can fill up the the unused the unused passageways now. Seal them off. That's the redstone going into that little room now. This is the the entrance to the mob system, which I've just managed to make a mess of. Such as that. Okay. Right, so I'll just fill in all these gaps, I'll be right back. Okay, right, so cleared out these rooms here and tidied up 
and got all the furnaces out, just put everything into this one chest, filled in the passageways, and now I'm just going to fill in the, the roofs here with the crafting tables. Just make a large collection of crafting tables first. Obviously seven's not going to be enough, going to need more later on. Fortunately however redstone can travel over the tops of crafting tables, which means there wasn't a problem with removing that one block which was there and then putting it putting your crafting table in its place. This can take quite a lot of wood though. I actually don't think I might have enough. Nope, I'm not gonna have enough, oh well. Go okay, I can get some more later. Okay, so that's that room. That's that room more or less completed. What we need to place in here though is the I built uh brought some more materials for one more brewing stand, so we now have three and brought the two from the base. So we can now have those going along there. And the chests I think I put along this wall here. Um two, 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 and then another three sets of two double chests there, and I'm not sure I think that should, that should be enough for what I need. Right, so that is more or less the, the mob system completed, and that project is now done. So, thanks very much for watching, I'm going to cut the episode here, but thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.